A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <laughs> when the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of tartar doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the, chi the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother was, were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword, will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband, after her marriage, and then as a widow until the, she was aged four, she never left the temple but worshipped night and day with fast, fasting and prayer, and coming forward at, a very, at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child and all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. is doing in every liturgy that we participate. And he is working on us that are present, but also on our families. For this reason, we receive the word of the Lord. Not only we hear the words of the Lord, but we receive them and they are transformative. They are acting and they are clothing us with the feelings, the right feelings that are necessary to love each other above all in our families and in the family of God that is this community for you and for me. And uh, when Paul said, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and passion, and so on. He, mm, mm, he is saying that because in this Eucharist, you can put on these things on you. You can clothe with these 
beautiful feelings that comes uh, that come from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the, the evangelist Luke, Luke describes the early steps of the Nazareth family, which obedient to the law goes to the temple to present the child Jesus to God and then returns to Nazareth. <laughs> Imagine that this, in this family, Mary and Joseph are very conscious that the children belong not to them, but to God. And the only place <coughs> is that great teaching for us. We cannot possess the people. <laughs> neither our sons and daughters. <laughs> we, we can bring the people to God. It's beautiful. And in this going to the temple, apparently nothing strange happens. Everything is colored with normality. We don't witness any miracles, just a normal, very normal family walking in their everyday life in communion with their God. And in truth, after the singularity of the incarnation event with angels from the sky, uh, one would expect some particular occurrence. But everything is normal, nothing miraculous except for those with eyes to see. So when they go to the temple, they are, there are no signs indicating the presence of the Messiah, only the voices of two elderly people waiting to see the Messiah, Simeon and the prophetess Anna. It seems that only they have recognized the Messiah, while everyone else remains oblivious. What does the Lord want to tell us with these events? In this normalcy, the friendly face of God emerges not frightening, but becoming the companion of each of us. You just need eyes to see this uh, friendly God. Often we think that if God were by our side, we should see miracles, we should live without problems. If God if with me, then all difficulties should be smoothed out. But uh, this mentality is a magical mentality, a capricious child's mentality. Here, in this mentality, there is no faith, only demand. At the end of the day, one might think that God is with the perfect, with those to whom everything goes well. Pay attention to think like that. This mentality is nothing new. It's just a pagan mentality that welcomes the ancient temptation that God is good to the good, and, the, and God is an implacable judge uh, to the wicked. But the God that the Gospel presents to us, He showed Himself in normal, in normalcy, in the normality, in everyday life. We don't have to look far. God lives and comes in the normal events of life, like happened in the life of Mary and Joseph. God is so close that we almost don't notice. So close that God doesn't leave us alone. 
is so close that he is sharing everything with us. Even the most ordinary person, including the sinner, including you and me, can feel God besides them as a friend. What we desperately need is to have eyes to see the presence, this presence of God in our everyday lives. Let's not despise the normality of our life. Not, let's not despise simple and everyday gestures, the same gestures that Joseph and Mary did it to Jesus. Because in them, the presence of God is reflected. Above all, all pay attention to see God's presence in your family, also in your community family, that is our church. That attitude helps you to be grateful for what we are, this mentality, that is the Christian mentality, to see God near you, had to marvel before the beauty of our daily life, our everyday life, smiling at the banality of the daily events and coloring them with gratitude and joy. Even Mary and Joseph marveled at what the shepherds had said and they were astonished at Simon's and Anne's words. They marveled that in their, their everything, everyday life there was the presence of God. Let's not despise, my dear friend, the gift of life, the gift of affections that we have and that we had in this last year. The gift of a table that after this Mass will waiting for us, will wait for us. The gift of a smile. Let's not despise the gift of a helping hand. The gift of a mother's and father's cares. The worm of a family because God is present there. Let's not run away from our everyday life. Otherwise, we will run away from the presence of God that is in this everyday life. There is no need to be different to feel God. Just be as you are. Learn only to marvel at what no longer astonishes, appreciating what we are, where we live, and with who, whom we live. This is the spirit of the family of Nazareth, a place where one marvels and appreciates the daily routine. End this year with gratitude, realizing the presence of God in your family. If you are alone, say to yourself, I am not alone. I have Koinonia, I have our little good kind of chapel. <laughs> and take a firm resolution for the year 2024. <laughs> This resolution to have moment of normality with your family and community, only to stay, to stay and to be marvel of our smiling, of our gestures, of our love, because you know that in the amid of us there is a lot of love, and I can see it, I can witness it. So thank you so much.